Joining me now is our in-house law firm, Neil Katigel, is the former acting U.S. Solicitor General. Andrew Weissman is the former general counsel at the FBI and a senior member of special counsel Robert Mueller's team. So, Andrew, let me start with you. Uh, because even though Trump is not directly responsible for these swatting attacks that we've seen, of course, this is a culture he's created. And as a person who served in law enforcement for a long time, I want to ask you about um, what law enforcement can actually do, because it feels like it's, it's just exploded, these swatting attacks, over the last couple of weeks. That's absolutely true. Um, this is certainly the case that, that law enforcement can investigate uh, and prosecute, as they have done with respect to a person who uh, threatened Judge Chutkin. Um, and while these attacks on prosecutors and on judges is, is obviously very concerning, I am keeping my eye on what the courts are going to do to protect witnesses and mm. jurors, um, because those are the people who, where this a need for deterrence matters. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I go back to my days of prosecuting Gambino, Genovese, and Colombo family members in New York City. Mm -hmm. What we did for witnesses is we had a law enforcement present, we, presence, we had the witness security program. Um, for jurors, we had anonymous and sequestered jurors. It is remarkable to me that we are going to be talking about that, those kinds of steps, when we're talking about a what should be a sort of white-collar case against somebody who was the former president of the United States. But those steps are yeah. going to be needed um, to assure witnesses and jurors of their safety so that they can do their job and won't be intimidated from reaching a just result. Whichever, whichever way that justice requires, they won't be intimidated um, from reaching the right result. It's such an, I mean, alarming but important point Andrew's making there, Neil. I mean, the fact is people like Judge Tanya Chutkin, Judge Ngoron, they've become kind of household names, as, as a, a lot of people involved in these trials and cases have been. That could be certainly the case with other witnesses. Would they be, would they be facing this kind of harassment if not for him? Is there any question in your mind? There, there's no question in my mind that they wouldn't, uh, John. You know, judges, prosecutors, witnesses, court officials, they shouldn't need round-the-clock protection. And it's defendant Trump's hateful and dishonest rhetoric that's fueling these kinds of threats. And, you know, particularly given the lead into this, when you were talking about Iowa and the other primaries, to me, one of the questions is, what is the, what did these episodes say about Donald Trump? And I think mm -hmm. they say a lot, because, you know, Jen, when you and I were in the government, if we made any sort of stray remark that could wind up hurting someone, we would bend over backwards to make sure that didn't happen. We'd issue corrective statements, this, that, the other. I mean, it's not just us in government. I mean, every kid who's watched Spider-Man knows with great power comes great responsibility. And, you know, Trump could put an end to all this with a single social media post. The public knows it. The mm -hmm. officials know it. Trump knows it. He's making a deliberate decision to stay quiet about these threats and stir it up and then pretend, oh, who, me? I had nothing to do with it. It's, it's you know, preposterous and horrible. I, I want to just look ahead here because there's so many cases that we're waiting on, um, including uh, the D.C. Circuit to rule on Trump's claim of immunity any day now. So let me ask both of you. Um, I mean, if they do rule against Trump, which I think most legal experts are expecting them to do, but he's going to take it to the Supreme Court. Everybody expects that, too. Do you think, let me start with you, Andrew, that the Supreme Court would take this up? Or what are the options in terms of what could happen here? You know, I don't know that the Supreme Court will take it up. Um, I used to think it was clear they would, um, but the argument is was so preposterous. Um, this is really one where I think Trump is trying to you know, win the war but may lose the battle. And what I mean by that is this is all about delay uh, rather than the merits of the case. So the thing that I'm keeping my eye on is when the D.C. Circuit rules against him, how much time do they give um, and sort of limit with respect to sending this back to Judge Chutkin? Because I think that's the whole ball game: is mm -hmm. how tight a leash will there be on that time frame so that he can't play out the clock. Neil, you have argued, you spent a lot of time in the Supreme Court arguing cases, thinking about the Supreme Court, a, a lot of time. What is your thought on here and what could happen? 
I don't think the Supreme Court's likely to hear the case, Jen. I mean, Trump's claims are so unhinged that the president could do whatever he wants and, you know, murder people with SEAL Team 6. This is crazy. The Supreme Court, I don't think, is going to have much appetite for this. So I'm looking for three things. I'm looking for the rationale of the Court of Appeals decision, the timing of the Court of Appeals decision, and then technically, do they stay the mandate? Do they allow the, the March 4th trial date to proceed mm. as is? I'm suspecting that they're going to do all of those things and basically cue closely to what Judge Chutkin found already, which means that this trial can go forward. I think it's doubtful at this moment the Supreme Court's going to hear this case and stop the trial based on such a bogus theory. March is coming soon. Now, before I let you both go, I want, the Eugene Carroll trial, which begins Tuesday, it's hard to keep track of all these things So sometimes, so great to have both of you. Uh, it's almost become an afterthought, but why, Andrew, should we not lose sight of this one specifically? Well, this is an important example of Donald Trump not adhering to the rule of law. I mean, he was already found liable by a jury and then proceeded uh, to continue to defame E. Jean Carroll. Um, and that is not just me saying it. That is the federal judge overseeing this has found liability. So the case is going to be about the damages needed to deter Donald Trump from continuing his defamation of E. Jean Carroll, who he has been found to have sexually assaulted and defamed. So, you know, again, if you're thinking about who to vote for, you would think you might be interested in knowing what a jury, a unanimous jury, found here, and you'd keep your eyes mm -hmm. on what the second jury is going to be doing in connection with the monetary judgment against him. You would think. What a year. Uh, Neil Katziel and Andrew Weissman, thank you both so much for your time this afternoon.